last week when I picked them, they were tiny like this. But this week we fertilized and what's happening? We volunteer here to grow produce organically and share in that harvest. It has seven different fruit trees grafted to it. This tunnel has 200 tomato plants in it. There's a job for everybody at the community garden. <laughs> All right, so everybody find an onion that you like. Awesome. It is $40 a year. If you can't find one, go start one. We have planted 3,000. I see you guys have onions coming up. See how they're sticking up out of the ground now? My name is Tracy Kozlowski and I'm a volunteer here at the White Mountain Community Garden. Um, we have so many weeds, so we really need to get a, rid of them in a quick, fast way. And ash is good for the soil, so after we've burned in this ditch for a while, we will go ahead and cover it up with soil and stuff like that. So it'll amend the, amend the soil as well. Sometimes people can't garden at home because they live in an apartment. There's just not enough space. Sometimes the terrain or the soil is difficult to grow in. You know, sometimes you've got neighbors and it's just really not conducive. So the great thing about a community garden is it's a place you can go, you're welcome there. So it's just a better alternative for people who may have difficulty growing at home for other reasons. We're gonna start over here at the children's garden. This is super cool because we are teaching the kiddos everything about gardening. They got in here with spades, dug the soil, and planted the plants in the ground. And then they go through and they weed when they see some weeds in there. And it's super cool because a lot of kids don't realize where food comes from. They don't know that carrots grow in the ground and apples grow on a tree and all these different things. By both hands and just pull it up. There you go. Pull up. There you go. This is a beautiful way to see where it comes from and to realize that you can be a part of that and you could do that for yourself, for your family. I just think that's really, really unique and really awesome. These are our in-ground beds and rows. We've got some grant money and we're starting to um, get more and more raised beds so that we can have more people help us if they have a physical disability or if they're older and they can't get on the ground and do stuff. You don't need any experience to come in. That may hold you back from going to a community garden is I've never grown anything or planted anything in my life what would I be able to offer a community garden? But you can offer so much. There's so many different tasks. There's always something in the garden. You're always having to either fix soil or take off bugs. Plants need trellising systems. We need water lines. There's so many things you can offer that you don't even realize it. I say just go, just show up and ask them, what do you need help with? What are you doing? So these are um, different types and styles of composting bins. We'll put our food scraps in there, then we'll add some brown material like leaves um, or shredded paper, and we'll give it a turn. We have one lady that she just loves to weed. She's like, nobody else likes to do it. I like to do it, I'll do it, I don't mind. So it's super cool, there's something for everyone. These different piles of soil are things that we utilize throughout the year to amend our beds. Wood chip piles, so kind of just whatever supplies we need to either mulch our beds or again, amend the soil. This is our um, herb garden, which you can see here we have thyme, we have rosemary, we have the chives. No matter your physical ability, capabilities, we have kids in here, we have special needs people that come volunteer at the community garden. It's a great way to give to the community. The orchard is part of our memorial garden, and so a lot of these trees that we've planted in the orchard, we've actually named after like a founding member or um, a member who's maybe passed on.
2014, the community garden worked really hard to save up money to get this high tunnel. This is a huge addition to our community garden because number one, we can extend our growing season, but number two, we can provide a place that our nightshades like tomato plants love. So this tunnel has 200 tomato plants in it. We have 17 different varieties of tomatoes in here. And you can see this guy gets heavier and heavier the more, the bigger the fruit goes. So we just are wrapping some twine gently around the stalk of the plant and then tying it up to whatever you're trellising it to. You'll have a tomato plant that maybe will produce all its tomatoes at one time. So the benefit of that is that you harvest all those, you can go back and can them. All of these are tomato plants starting from here down, but we have this huge sunflower. Look at the size of this thing. He is easily nine feet tall. And we just, we just can't wait for him to open up and just uh, smile that big old sunny smile at us. <laughs> After you've been gardening a while, you will get volunteer plants. So these are seeds that were either left behind by the fruit or the plant. And that's beautiful to see too, like what will grow in that soil? You, you, you didn't have any intention of having that particular plant, but that's kind of exciting to see, um, to see it come to life anyway. So some of them are starting to turn color already. Look at this guy. That's kind of an in-between stage and then he'll get redder. This is where we, when we planted them, we put them in those walls of water. This bag right here, has these tubes that you fill with water. You put this around the plant, and what happens is during the day, the temperatures and the sun reflecting off of this will heat this, this water that's in these tubes up. And then at nighttime, when the temperatures cool down, it keeps that warmth around the plant. It's like a mini greenhouse, and it gives us a longer growing season. We can put them out in the elements earlier by having this wall of water. So this plant is called borish, and this is a amazing companion plant for our tomato plants. The symbiotic relationship between these two are, is pretty awesome. These beautiful little flowers, little purple blue flowers on them, they seem so small, but the bees absolutely love them. So this brings in our pollinators to come here as well as then they'll pollinate our tomato plants. The other cool thing about borage is it repels the tomato hornworm, which is an enemy of our tomato plants. They'll eat our leaves, and you can see how the pollinators love it. This is where our honeybees are. So one of our volunteers is actually a beekeeper up here on the mountain, so he knows all about them. If we didn't have those bees pollinating those plants, those plants wouldn't grow or produce fruit we wouldn't have food. So last year was the first year garden members got like a little jar of honey. The honey is just a beautiful example of, again, what they take that pollen and make into, and then now we have honey too. We need bees and bees need us. We also have a mason beehive. And this is it, it's located in our memorial garden and the mason bees are just like local bees, individual bees that just from the area, they have made a nest here in, in this mason beehive. Mason bees are a great option for the home gardener who maybe doesn't want a whole hive of bees that is making honey, but maybe just some mason bees that'll come in and pollinate your garden. Um, so we got a grant to put in this ornamental garden last year. So it's brand new to us. And the purpose of this garden is it's an educational garden. It's to show different ways to grow, different type of things you can grow. This first section right here is a succulent garden. So you can see there's tons of different succulents that will grow up here. And they're flowering right now. They look just so beautiful. Utilizing natural landscape, like the lava rocks that are here, or utilizing wood. These are some raised beds that you can get just like at the big box stores and stuff like that. Here's an example of some like bricks and it's a fun little pattern. And then besides the succulents, we have some herbs over here. We have rose bushes. We have um, butterfly bushes, um, hummingbird bushes. 
We have this really cool spaler tree. I'll take you and show you this fruiting tree that we have over here. This is a cool tree. It has seven different fruit trees grafted to it. Here's a gala apple right here growing off here. Um, but then here's the Cortland apple and here's a red Macintosh apple growing here. And so again, you can have seven different types of fruit. This guy's pretty cool. This is a self waterer. These are our basil right here. And so you just fill water in here and it wa bottom waters and the herb plants like basil just absolutely love that. This is an organic garden. So we don't use any kind of pesticides or insecticides and anything like that to spray. So that's super important to us. And then it's important too because Again, those kinds of things, they may take care of the weeds, but then they'll also kill some of our bugs and our insects that we love to have in the garden. So it's another reason why we do that. The food is amazing. It's remarkable how different a tomato from my garden tastes compared to a store-bought tomato. It's, it's noticeably different. Strawberries, it's the same thing. And then the fact that you worked for that, you picked off those beetles and you, you know, you just, you watered it routinely and you fertilized it and you washed it through the whole process from seed to growth. I don't know, that makes it taste better. It's just remarkable how much you appreciate your food. It tastes better too. I feel like I'm living a healthier lifestyle and I'm a healthier me because of being in the garden as well as eating from the garden. Okay, so this is our worm bed. This bed specifically is just for worms. <laughs> worms are cool. We have earthworms. We have lots of different varieties. The red wigglers are one of our favorites. They aerate the soil. They provide those castings, which are nutrients to the soil. It will compost um, right, very quickly for us and turn things over. So we love the red wigglers but we have all different species of worms. So it's just a cool, easy way to be a farmer and to support your garden. Hey Peggy, do you mind if we come look at your peas? No, I don't mind at all. Okay. I retired a couple years ago from public safety. I wanted to do something in retirement that was totally different from that. Their peas are super happy. Look at them coming in. They're filling out, they look so good. These little flowers here will turn into the little pea pods. So I had been in this community and heard about the community garden and I thought, oh, I just wanna go check that out. Um, both of my grandfathers were gardeners, uh, their backyard gardening. And I thought, I wanna check that out. So I came over to learn more about it. And the more that I was here, the more I wanted to be here. Peggy, how often do you come and work on your raised bed gardens? Twice a week. Twice a week. It just brought so much joy. It felt good to be outdoors. It felt good to get your hands in the soil, to learn new skills. I see you guys have onions coming up. Were they up last time you were here? See how they're sticking up out of the ground now? And it's not just about, you know, planting plants. There's so much more that goes into it and so many resources and just, it just, yeah, it just blew my mind. It was, it was amazing. And I'm just so glad that I'm here and I'm learning more and more every year and now helping other people that are starting on this new adventure too.